Barn Owl appeals to me as a beautiful Australian and brilliant Australian poem, but as a particularly typical poem of Gwen Harwood's. Um, the poem really strikes me, I think, as an ex example of her work or exemplar of her work, because it combines, as so much of her work does, technical brilliance and technical prowess and a tightly planned form with really hard hitting uh, images and really hard hitting emotional engagement. I do think of Gwen Harwood's work in contrast to someone like Judith Wright, who uh, was a peer of Harwood's. Um, I think the difference between Harwood and a poet like Wright, um, whether you want to talk about them as both female poets or both Australian poets post-war, um, is that Harwood is able to address big ideas, big themes of, of life and death, family dramas, um, in almost stealthy ways. What I mean is that the technical brilliance of her work almost dazzles you. You forget that you're reading about this idea of, of blood, naivety, responsibility, regret, memory. Um, and also I think she's able to convey emotion in quite muted and um, almost repressed ways. Um, I think that goes back to her constantly um, referring to memory in her work. Whereas I think if you look at someone like Wright, um, Wright is much more interested in talking about big ideas and big themes directly and in political language and using um, grand gestures and symbols. Barn Owl comes from a, a suite of two poems, a set piece of two poems called Father and Child. In the first poem, Barn Owl, um, we meet this father-child relationship um, in its infancy, as it were, uh, from, partly at least, from the child's point of view, um, but also framed then within the adult's um, memory looking back. In the second part of Father and Child, um, it's very much an adult voice with an adult consciousness speaking to her dead or dying father. Um, and this work comes from the sort of late middle period of Harwood's writing um, when she'd sort of shed those early pseudonyms and, and masks and I think was hammering at some issues and feelings that were probably a little bit closer to home um, and, and getting into a more lyrical um, sort of uh, exploration of, of family. I'm thinking of another poem from around this time called Mother Who Gave Me Life um, which is also quite a dramatic, you could even say melodramatic way of uh, speaking about one's, one's parents. Um, and again, the father figure comes into Mother Who Gave Me Life at the very end of that poem as well. I think family um, for Harwood is a kind of stage on which, again, these big ideas of, of death, loss, reconciliation can be played out. But I think that rather than reading her poems as confessional um, investigations into, into just her own memories, they unfold into being much more universal, much more general um, explorations of, of those ideas. Oh, there's so much wit in Gwen Howard's poetry. I mean, she's just, uh, she's a joker, you know, she's a, she's a hoax, she's a trickster and, and was from the very beginning of her writing career. I think the fact that she starts uh, looking at family and memory more in her middle later work doesn't mean that she stops um, being interested, I think, in irony particularly. And I think irony is the sort of great frame that's around her entire body of work. Um, I think it allows her to talk earnestly or I guess, if not talk earnestly, to uh, look at ideas that she feels earnestly, um, but not to look at them in sentimental or nostalgic ways, um, and not to necessarily look at them in direct ways. I think Howard is interested in those, those feelings as, um, as philosophical problems a lot of the time.